Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. MMO Reporter's PAX Prime coverage is brought to you by Dragon Fantasy, The Black Tome of Ice, a 16-bit style JRPG coming soon on Steam, iOS, Android, 3DS, and Wii U. Hey everybody, Chris here from MMO Reporter, and we are at Benaroya Hall getting ready to go see Acquisitions, Inc. I have got Bill, Jason, Carrie, and myself here ready to talk to you about what we have seen today. It's been a very busy day for all of us. We're going to start at the very end, and Bill is going to let us know what he has done today at PAX Day 1. Well, I started off with a couple panel views today. We went to a panel on uh, couples that game together, which was actually really neat. So kind of a couple game suggestions that Ch uh, Sean and I are going to try out and hopefully have some fun there. Uh, I went to a really neat panel uh, put on by the, the folks at EDAR, which are basically the biggest game sales data collectors out there and learned some amazing things just about sales trends for, for everything. The quick and dirty Steam is huge. Of course. Surprise. And, and consoles are only big because of game margins. If it weren't for game margins, consoles would be pointless. So, oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. So there you go. So that was really interesting. We got to see a, we did a panel actually for the uh, new release of uh, the King's Quest remake, which is not so much a remake as it is just a new chapter that's a little bit of a prequel to King's mm -hmm. Quest 1 and 2. So that was really cool. Um, and uh, so they've already released chapter one. Chapter two was announced today. So they keep your eyes peeled for that. Very, very cool. If you've got any Sierra history at all, it's amazing. It's actually being made by the risen zombie of Sierra. So, oh, so, way so, cool. So nice that was that. very cool. So that was my day. How about yourself, Jason? Uh, well, I had a lot of fun. Uh, started out the day demoing Eco. Eco, a lot like Minecraft. But only really in looks and playstyle. After that, it all kind of yeah. is something really new and unique, which is nice to see in that space. Uh, every action you take in that game has a consequence to the ecology of the game. Mm. And it's kind of disaster driven. So you're on a mission to try to save the world you're playing in from disaster. Not as big of an MMO scene as we thought it would be. Right. Uh, but there's going to be a public server component like Minecraft has. And then you'll be able to play with all of your friends play with only the friends you want, however you want to do that. Yeah. Headed off to the Razor panel. Not as much interesting information as I had hoped for. They do have a nice new pro-grade controller for Xbox One. Mm -hmm. The downside, those on PS4 still left out from them at this time. So I'd really love to see them put out something for PS4. Not sure if it's going to happen. They've never done it in the past. We'll see how that goes. All right. uh, headed over to the HyperX guys. Stay tuned for some reviews. They want to talk with us about some of their new headsets and some of their other peripherals they've got. Looks like some pretty interesting stuff that they've got. Nice. But everybody was busy. Nobody had a lot of time. So they're going to get in touch with us, and we're going to try to have some more content for you later on there. And then I got to talk with Jordan Weissman, of all people, of FASA fame. He's back at Hairbrain Schemes. I keep saying that wrong, so you'll notice in the video I said it wrong earlier, too. Hairbrain Schemes. They've got a Kickstarter for a Battletech video game, a real legitimate Battletech video game. Nice! It's going to be awesome. He has a ton of information in the interview that we got. Stay tuned for that. Shadowrun Hong Kong has a lot of revamps on the other Shadowrun games. Another continuation of the series. Looks like it's going to be great. Awesome! Yeah. What about you, Carrie? What kept you busy today? Um, I started my day at the press hour, and Matt and I headed straight to the Bethesda booth. And we were like the first one there. They had a working Mr. Talking to us with his little arms. Nice. It was really cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then we ended up in the indie booth and we saw a couple of things. I cannot remember the name of it, but we must try it. It involves um, a bomb and somebody trying to tell you how to right. use the right. bomb. So, so, really quickly, it's one person has an Oculus Rift on, they can see the bomb. Yeah. The other person who can't see the Oculus Rift, what they can see, has the manual on how to defuse 21 different bombs. So the person wearing the Oculus Rift has to describe what the bomb looks like, and then the person with the manuals has to tell them, without seeing anything, how to defuse the bomb. Yeah. Like, it's that's, so fun. this is the type of stuff where VR is finally starting to get to the point where they are making content that really couldn't happen without it. Right, and that's really, really interesting. Okay, sorry, go ahead. All right. so I'm excited about that one a little bit. Yeah, so my first interview this morning was with Ann Alter, and got an interesting thing going. So it's a cooperative game, but your phone or your tablet is the controller for the 
game. So it goes through your PC. Um, everybody can see the, um, the area that you're playing in, and you choose off of your phone what you what you choose to do, fireballs, things right. like that. It's yeah. cooperative in the way that, you know, you know, you always have the guy that talks to the NPC and then tries to steal all the loot. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, you can do that. Leonor. Yeah. You yeah. Can totally do that in this game. Um, and then I went and saw Dragon Hidden Soup. Um, yeah, it really did totally ruin fairy tales. Um, yeah. Their, their um, protagonist yeah. is a uh, drunk red writing hood. Okay. Like, uh, alcoholic red writing Oh, so really did ruin fairy tales. Yeah, like, pretty much, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I won't tell you what Snow White is like. But anyway, <laughs> um, they don't have a release date for that yet. But it, it's really kind of neat because it's coming out on PC, uh, PS4, Vita, iOS, and Android. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty fun. Um, and then I went and saw a panel on, it's called Don't Hit the DM. It was a bunch of <laughs> therapists talking about how they use um, Dungeons and Dragons and Minecraft in their therapy. And nice. And That's really cool. Folks, the teenage boys. Yeah. That was it. That's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so my day started out with uh, a trip to the Oculus booth, and we were there pretty much. I think the second or third in line, and we went through, and then we got back in line uh, again, <laughs> um, and Jason joined us, and we we went through, um, and then I. Got back in line again, and went for the third time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I tried Oculus Rift twice, and I tried Oculus uh, the VR, the Gear VR once. No, I can't say. I think the hardware was great. I think the demo itself, though, I I'm gonna chalk it up to a, a just a bad demo rather than bad tech or anything like that. I just didn't click with it, and I, I, don't, I don't feel like I was given really great instructions about how to control it. Like, there's a little touchpad on the side of the headset. Nobody told me that. They handed me a controller that was useless. So, anyways, uh, went to see that, but then we went and saw Guild of Dungeoneering. Their new expansion is coming out. You can see that uh, interview to find out more about that. Um, it finally answers the question, the age-old question, what do you do with a drunken sailor? Because there is a new drunken sailor class in, or a dungeoneer, new drunken sailor dungeoneer. So that's, that's cool. Uh, we also went and talked to Wargaming and talked about World of Warships. And once again, as is tradition at PAX, I had cosplayers behind me looking over my shoulder a little bit. Uh, I don't know what that tradition is starting with, but that was because the cosplayers, Master of Orion, they're remaking it. They have the original composer. They have a lot of the original development team as um, consultants on it. The original development team is playing this game, so very excited about that. Uh, we went over and uh, chatted with the people over at Tryon, and I actually, I have been told this very specifically. I can't talk on this daily podcast because the embargo doesn't lift for another hour, and, and it's someone around us could hear what I'm talking about. So there's something coming out by the time this video comes out, 8 o'clock today, uh, that um, you will want to go see because it's something new from Tryon Worlds. Got to see Trove as well, Rift, and Arcage. Some pretty cool information coming out of all of those games. Rift, a new class, which I like. It's like a mage class. Um, it does things a little bit differently. And then we went and uh, played Gigantic. Oh, Gigantic. Where I proceeded unequivocally, unequivocally to, uh, to, to, to beat Matt undefeated. We, he, his team scored no points. His team <laughs> scored no points. And he, 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 oh, wait, hi. No. Uh, so, so, okay, okay. So he won the first game. Um, where we scored two points, he scored three points, and three points is winning. We won the second game as a shutout. So I'm going to say that we're the better team. Because overall, we got more points compared to their amount of points. Well, we didn't play a third game so I we did I... not play a third game. I know. Uh, so Gigantic was a lot of fun as well. We're going to be talking about that a lot in the future. Uh, and also uh, talk to the folks over at XSplit for a little bit. So uh, some cool stuff coming out of that, like a... a, a um, uh, a, a program where they're going to uh, have like referral codes for their streamers who use XSplit. So oh, that's, nice. that's kind of interesting. So that's our day for today. Uh, you can check out uh, all of our videos tomorrow. We're not going to go into everything that we're seeing tomorrow. But Bill, one thing you're seeing tomorrow, excited about? Uh, what? Oh, Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 panel. Jason? I, I'm in the same boat, excited for Guild Wars 2. 
Carrie? I don't get to go see Guild Wars 2. Um, I do get to go see Final Fantasy stuff, though. That's mm -hmm. really exciting, and I can't wait. I, I'm excited. Sword Coast Legend panel. That's going to be freaking awesome. But I, I'm going to cheat because I've got the last say. <laughs> Afternoon with Patrick Rothfuss is going to be awesome. We're going to that, too. Thanks, everyone, for watching all the videos. I hope that you enjoy them. Thank you to all our Kickstarters. And, of course, thank you to Muteki. Dragon Fantasy is our sponsor. Uh, and we really appreciate all that they've done to make sure that we get here, as well as all of our Kickstarter backers. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We hope that you enjoy the videos. And, of course, we hope to see you at PAX. Happy third birthday, Bye. Guild Wars 2. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.